going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all of the records i've acquired within november of this year 2019 uh, this is my first ever regular monthly vinyl haul video and i say that because if you're a long time viewer of this channel i usually tend to do um vinyl haul videos every two months so like i would have a video covering january and february some time will pass and then i'll have one covering march and april and uh when i had started this channel i felt that doing just regular monthly hauls uh would come across as running low on ideas because this channel within the youtube vinyl community is very much topic driven and uh, what I realized with time is that people love the hauls. You know, it's videos like them that get the most views. And there's always this thing with, you know, VC members just seeing what other VC members get. You know, it's just great to see what collectors and record lovers are getting at the time. And I felt that with my last haul, which covers September and October, I kind of hit a tipping point because um, at my rate of buying, the hauls tend to be long. And this last haul that I did ran two hours. Now, two hours is a justifiable time to see a live show or watch a great movie. But spending two hours watching someone like me showcase records, talk some facts and details, it's a bit overload. And I've had to advise viewers to, you know, spread watching, you know, my big haul videos over a span of a couple days and I feel like that's just going a bit too far so um, I just decided to do regular monthly haul videos um, in an attempt to um, make them more concise and also I feel like this will keep me a bit more up-to-date with you guys in terms of what I'm receiving at the time things won't be so you know outdated and whatnot so um, I think this is gonna be a major benefit for myself and also for my viewers out there so Enough of the chit chat, sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. All right, so we are gonna start this haul off with a bang, and I guess you could call this a grail of sorts, uh, simply because I never thought that I would own this record in my collection, and that's just simply due to the value um, of this record and how scarce copies are. Um, you would be lucky if you can find a copy less than $100, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I don't know why I decided to miss out on this when it first came out as part of Record Store Day 2017. Um, it was just one of those things that kind of passed by the wayside. And when I was ready to kind of see what the, the availability was, um, it was just a little bit out of my comfort zone in terms of what I would spend for a record. And so I added it to my Discogs want list and I would get notifications from time to time regarding people that would, you know, post copies for sale. Uh, some were just a bit high, so I kind of waited around a little bit and I honestly feared that I just would not ever get this record. Uh, but someone decided to post a copy for sale for about 40 bucks, which I thought was okay considering the statistics according to Discogs and what it goes for and what the average price is and whatnot. So, um... Better be me that snagged it than someone else and uh, have myself miss the opportunity. So, regardless, very happy to have it in the collection. And that is The Doors, live at the Matrix, 1967. Now, like I said, this came out as part of Record Store Day 2017. Um, this is part of the band's sort of ploy to put back out the Matrix live recordings uh, since they have the original... Um, tapes from the shows that they did because the 2008 um cd live at the matrix used um like the next to best you know sort of source it wasn't the original tapes which they ended up buying from the guy that had recorded the shows at the matrix uh in 2009 and they've been kind of sitting on the tapes and they're kind of slowly putting them out uh there's a cd that comes with a deluxe self-titled debut and they did a volume two in 2018. And so they're kind of slowly but surely putting these recordings back out. Now, I have volume two of the Doors Live at the Matrix series, which came out as part of Record Store Day 2018. But my OCD was raging high when I know that I have volume two, but I don't have volume one. So uh, very happy to finally have it. Now, this particular release uh, includes songs that are only featured on the band's first album. So, of course, you get classic Doors stuff on here like Backdoor Man, Light My Fire, Crystal Ship, and whatnot. Just an absolutely amazing track list. We have nice 
custom labels here. This was pressed at Quality Record Pressings, mastered by Bernie Grunman, so you know that it is a uh, product of top-notch quality. And uh, we also have a printed inner sleeve as well, which has the credits on this side and a nice picture of the band here. And just for showing you guys, because all points must be uh, acknowledged, this is limited to 10,000 copies, which is a rather high number. You would suspect it being as limited as that, it would be readily available, but not so much. And for those curious, I have copy number 8,560. So like I said, so happy to finally have this album in my collection. Definitely fills a gap, and I cannot wait to spin this bad boy. Doors Live at the Matrix 67. All right, so like all my hauls, there's a bunch of Amazon finds, and that is exactly what entails with this next batch of albums I'm going to show you guys. Uh, these were part of the um, three for two sale that Amazon was doing on their site, um, not just with records, but just other products that they offer. Um, they had done another three for two sale back in October, and they and I got some albums from that. And if you want to peel back on my previous haul, you can check them out. Uh, but I felt that the vinyl selection for this sale was absolutely much better. And I easily could have gotten more than three albums, but I just decided to stick to my confinements and just pick three and just kind of rank what was important to get first. Because when it comes down to deals on vinyl, you got to jump on them. You got to make the most of it. And uh, the first record I'm going to show you guys is the first one that I said to myself, yes, this is an absolute must get. It is... Nirvana's Live at the Paramount. Uh, this came out actually uh, recently this year. Um, and I did have it on pre-order on Amazon, but I had canceled it just because there was other stuff going on at the time. Uh, this release uh, documents the infamous Halloween show that the band did at their hometown theater, the Paramount uh, in Seattle, Washington. And um, this is the first time that we have seen an, um, an audio release of this show uh, because there is a really beautifully shot DVD and Blu-ray which came out back around, I want to say 2011, 2012. Um, it's the only Nirvana show that was filmed on really nice film stock. Um, you definitely need to check it out. And um, this is all that we have in terms of audio from this show. Uh, they did put it on CD, I believe, for the Nevermind uh, 20th Anniversary Super Deluxe set. But it's cool that we're finally getting the vinyl. Fantastic track list uh, filled with songs from the first two albums along with some covers. Uh, they open up the show with uh, Jesus Doesn't Want Me For A Sunbeam, which the band did on their uh, Unplugged album, which is quite cool. Nice Gate Bolt Sleeve, which has... Uh, photos from the show it's a two lp set um i'll just showcase the first lp because all the labels are unison um i like how they took the little squiggly smiley face character and made him into a pumpkin to fit with the idea that this was indeed uh recorded on halloween night which is really nice so glad that they actually went uh that step to include that and in terms of extras uh we have a really nice sort of poster-esque kind of insert which has the uh, the cover on this side and then when you tilt it over and open it we have uh, pictures from the show and then also as a really nice added bonus if I can fish it out from the second slot of the gatefold can I get it out oh where is it don't tell me I put oh here it is I can get it out Come on. there we go we have a little replica Backstage Pass, which serves as a download card, so you can go online and get your digital downloads, and then you can just burn it onto a CD and you have your CD copy of the album. So really happy to have it. Nirvana's Live at the Paramount. And up next is from 1978, Some Girls by The Rolling Stones. Uh, this is a rather notable album in their discography simply because... Um, it's full of hits. Um, the most notable one being Miss You. Um, there's, um, let's see, Beast of Burdens on here. Respectable. The title track, uh, Shattered, which is a really fun track. Just full of great, great songs from the Stones. Now, this is not the die cut sleeve where once you like take this sleeve out, there's like the holes on the cover and you can see the faces through, which is kind of a letdown, but at least it's replicated. Nice touch. And uh, the vinyl itself is pressed on nice heavyweight vinyl. Nice custom yellow Rolling Stones records uh, labels here. 
Really, really nice. Cannot wait to spin this one and uh, dig deeper with the stones because my stones collection is still growing. I mean, I appreciate their work, but I'm still kind of working my way through their catalog. And the same can be said with the next album that I got, and that is Wings at the Speed of Sound. This came out back in 1976. This is notable for including uh, Let Em In and Silly Love Songs, and we also have some other songs on here like Warm and Beautiful. I'm um, just really excited to dig deeper into Wings and uh, McCartney's uh, post-Beatles work. Here's the cover. Here's the backside. Got the various pictures of the band members. And then we have a little lyric insert sheet, which has all the lyrics to the songs. And then we have a um, kind of a curved uh, printed inner sleeve here, which has the speed of sound venue doors opening to where you can see Paul and Winks performing. And then on the back, we have a nice photo collage, which is really nice. Take the vinyl out. And we have nice custom labels here as well, which is really cool. Very, very nice. And uh, they also did a orange vinyl variant of this particular reissue. This was done back in 2017. There was the standard black, which is available forever, essentially. And then they did a limited orange variant. And um, so for the collectors that want to get the more collectible variants, that perhaps is a notable one to get. But I am very, very excited to dig deeper into Wings with this album of theirs that I am proud to have in my collection, Wings at the Speed of Sound. All right, now we are going to transport ourselves to the Court of the Crimson King. Now, this right here is the 50th anniversary 2LP version. Uh, Stephen Wilson decided to have another crack at remixing this album in stereo in 5.1 and uh, DGM uh, gave us a very nice vinyl release for it which leaves me questioning are we going to get 50th anniversary versions of the rest of the Crimson albums as they approach their 50th anniversary on vinyl newly mixed whatever I don't know we just got the two black boxes of remixes so I don't think they'll do that they're just doing it for this uh, album which I think is justifiable because I would say it's the most important album in their catalog and also just an important album in music history in general. Uh, now, what's really cool about the cover here is that they actually used um, the original watercolor painting, which looks really, really sharp. And um, I was quite curious. So I pulled my 2010 original stereo mix copy just to kind of use as a comparison. This is the 2010. And then you can definitely see a bit of a difference. So like in the new one, um, the reds are much more pinker and the blues are darker and then here's the back Here's the original and then here's the new one You can definitely tell the biggest uh, difference comes in the gatefold which is perfectly replicated You can definitely see the uh, the contrast So there's the new one and then here is the older one here And then uh, the main album itself comes in a nice Polylined printed inner sleeve full of various King Crimson DGM products. And we uh, have nice custom labels here as well of the album cover. Of course, that's the A side. Flip it over, you have the B side. Very nice. Nice 200 gram vinyl, um, like all King Crimson vinyl releases. And uh, this was mastered by Jason Mitchell over at Loud Mastering, who has been doing um, a large portion of the recent uh, King Crimson vinyl cuts. Uh, he does spectacular work, so I'm quite excited to see what he offers with this uh, 2019 mix on the vinyl. And then we get to the second LP. So on this side, we have a variation of the album cover. And then on this side, we have nice pictures of the band members from the 69 lineup. So, of course, you have Robert Fripp, Greg Lake, rest in peace. Uh, we have Michael Giles, Peter Sinfield, and Ian McDonald, along with some quotes from each of the band members. And then we have um, a kind of breakdown of the track list for the alternative version of the album. So it starts off with the um, Morgan Studios version of Schizoid Man, which has uh, Greg Lake vocal overdubs from uh, Wessex Studios. So basically, um, they started recording at Morgan, 
it wasn't working. Then they went over to Wessex and the rest is history. So they kind of did a mashup version of that. And they also included some new overdubs from uh, Jacko Jaxic and Mel Collins, who were in the current um, incarnation of the band. And of course, Mel Collins was on Poseidon, Lizard, and Islands. Um, they add some stuff to like the middle solo improvisational section. And then we have an alternate mix of I Talk to the Wind, alternate take of Epitaph, um, and then on the flip side, we have an isolated uh, vocal version of Epitaph, which um, just has Greg's vocals, which is beautiful. Um, they actually uploaded this track as part of the King Crimson 50th anniversary download series that they do, like every Friday, and then um, it sounds great. Um, take one of Moonchild, uh, Morgan Studios version of Court of the Crimson King, and then to round it off, we have a trio version of Schizoid Man. So quite an interesting blend of various different versions of the songs that make up this classic album and then on the alternate LP we have uh, artwork from the gatefold so you have the face there and then here's the other side so I am quite excited to hear uh, how this new mix sounds uh, from what I've read online um, this vinyl version sounds great now what I'm curious on is how big of a difference is going to be compared to the original 2009 remix that uh, Stephen Wilson did, which I have as part of the the black boxes that they did um, last year. So I'm going to have to do some A, B, and see what the big differences are. But nonetheless, I'm just simply happy to be celebrating the 50th anniversary of one of the most important albums in music history and The Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson, the 2LP 50th Anniversary Edition. All right, so here is a rather interesting Kiss record that I just added to my vinyl collection uh, that I got with my Discover cashback bonus points. And um, the story behind this record is kind of interesting, and it entails with a lot of other records that are being made of this type currently. And that is this release here called Gods of Thunder. Now, a lot of labels, predominantly in Europe, um, will take um, FM broadcasts, uh, radio performances, things of that sort, properly license them and release them on these various different labels um, and it's essentially counterfeit releases because it is not sanctioned by the band or their label and the artist doesn't see their income from it and it's also you know not bootlegging so it is legal um, but it's kind of this sort of gray zone when it comes to you know vinyl releases um, and I saw an article recently that Amazon got slammed for selling counterfeit vinyl. Um, are they in the wrong for doing it? Not really, because like I said, it's not illegal activity. But then again, you also need to know what you're buying. Because I see a lot of releases like this for bands like Queen, Black Sabbath. Um, Bowie and a whole bunch of others, ACDC as well. And I even albums that are of legendary status, such as Miles Davis' Kind of Blue, I see countless variations with different types of artwork and whatnot. And it's just, it's just crazy when it's readily available from MoFi, uh, Sony, or whoever has the rights to it. But I digress. So the reason why I picked this up is um, because it is of a rather cool live show from uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil back in August of 1994. And from what I read on the Kiss My Wax uh, Facebook page, um, the audio from this uh, release is um, taken from the bonus DVD that's featured in Kissology Volume 3, which I uh, have. And um, it's a fantastic show. I mean, the lineup of... Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, Bruce Kulick, and Eric Singer um, are just absolutely tight and on fire. And um, this is not the full show. I'll showcase the track list there. But um, it's classic Kiss stuff. You cannot go wrong. You get uh, Deuce, Cold Gin, Calling Dr. Love, I Was Made for Loving You, Lick It Up, God of Thunder, Detroit Rock City, Black Diamond. It's all fantastic stuff. Now, I will say this, the artwork does leave a lot to be desired, but, I mean, they can't use the the logo and whatnot. They kind of have to sort of make it their own, I guess you could say. And uh, the vinyl itself, which is actually one of the really cool points, is that it comes on this really nice uh, piece of blue vinyl. It kind of looks a little milky at first, um, and actually, if you get it to the light right there, you can see, like, it has, like, a sort of nice marbled effect to it. You see flecks of dark blue in there which looks absolutely nice. 
show it again. And there we go. So I figured, you know, considering it's a good show and the uniqueness behind this release, the color of the vinyl, I figured why not? I mean, and plus, in terms of my KISS studio collection, you know, it's pretty much there as well as all the official live stuff. So now I'm just kind of going through the bootlegs and the other miscellaneous releases that are out there that I can get my hands on. So really stoked to have this in the collection. KISS Gods of Thunder. All right, so here is something cool. Uh, thanks to a fellow member on the Third Man Records Collectors Facebook page, I was able to snag this release that I had initially missed out on. And um, it was kind of my decision because I could have very easily signed up for the vault and get this package. But I um, kind of missed the deadline, and it was kind of one of those things like, eh, no big deal. Uh, but I found a guy that was actually selling this for about $10 less than what the subscription goes for, which... Every quarter at 60, well now it's 65, uh, but the guy was selling us for about 50 bucks. And I figured minus 10 bucks off the regular rate and also what entails with this release and how special it is in terms of Jack White's career, I figured I would give it a shot. And um, also I listened to the um, iTunes samples of it just to kind of see what the general sound would be like. And um, it was all appealing to my ears. So this is vault package number 41 and it is catered to this band here this is a band called the go uh now the go was a garage rock band from detroit in the late 90s they did uh this album which is on the sub pop uh label uh which does indeed feature jack white on guitar and there's jack right there and uh also another notable member in this band is uh dave buick who ran um italy records uh which was the label that released uh the first two uh, White Stripe Singles, Let's Shake Hands, and Lafayette Blues, and a bunch of other Detroit bands. Now, this version of the album is actually a remixed version that's done specifically for The Vault. I don't think this is going to be getting a release outside of The Vault. Uh, Jack White went ahead and remixed it from the original Reel to Reel tapes, and um, really excited to give this album a listen. The um, artwork is faithfully replicated here. And uh, the vinyl itself comes on this really nice vibrant opaque orange vinyl with a nice third man vault label there looks absolutely splendid and then aside from just getting the album we also get some other goodies as well um, we also have the Ferdinand uh, attic demos which is essentially a demo version of the album there you got the tape on the front and all the tracks listed on the back and check out the color of this particular record. Or colors, I should say. So check that out. So it's kind of like clear vinyl that has a very distinctive yellow hue. And there's like blobs of purple. Uh, the purple has like a nice sort of marbled metallic kind of look in person. You can't really make it out on camera. But it looks quite nice in person. So this is really, really cool. And now once I get my head wrapped around the album itself, then I'm sure I will come to appreciate the demos. And of course, it's kind of interesting to see how songs evolve from the original demo versions to the final studio versions that everyone knows and loves. And then we also have a 7-inch here. Uh, this is called Studio Outtakes. So this is just two songs uh, that were recorded during the sessions such as uh, Keep On Trash and Time For Moon. And uh, this just comes on standard black vinyl, I believe. Yes, it does. Nice custom Third Man label there. And last but not least, we also have a very nice photo book um, full of black and white photographs taken from many shows that The Go did over um, in Detroit. And it also has a couple of photos from the recording sessions of the album. So basically at this time, because this album came out around 1999, um, White Stripes, you know, were, you know, getting relatively famous. They did two singles on the Italy label. And then they also did their uh, first full length record for... Um, sympathy for the record industry so like while all that was going on uh jack managed to uh do this record with the go and i think in terms of his garage detroit roots uh which pretty much harks 
to the beginning of his career. I think this album serves as a rather interesting and notable footnote in his career. So I am quite excited to give this album, as well as the other records, a spin. The Go, What You Doing, The Vault Edition. All right, so here is yet another, you guessed it, Amazon price drop, but this time around, it is actually a vinyl box set. So a price drop on a box set is always good fun. So I remember when this uh, release came out last year, and I didn't really think too much to pick it up at first because even though this member is a part of one of my favorite bands of all time, I never really gave too much thought in regards to their own solo career and or their own solo material. And I just tried to think to myself, what could they lend to the table that is outside of the confinements of the band they are in? Uh, so I kind of just added this set recently to my Amazon uh, list, um, just thinking I would get it for Christmas or for a birthday later on down the road. But um, Amazon dropped this to an amazing price of $22, which is the price on average of a new vinyl pressing. And um, for what you get in this set, it's absolute bang for the buck. I am talking about... Pink Floyd's Nick Mason. This is the unattended uh, luggage box set. Uh, this brings together three albums that he did uh, in his career outside of the Floyd. We have um, Fictitious Sports, Profiles, and White of the Eye. Um, it's all housed in a very nice heavy-duty style box with very nice attractive colors and a nice um, cover on the box. The lid opens up just like this. And we have the vinyl goodies inside. So first is Fictitious Sports. Uh, this came out back in 1981. Uh, it was recorded around the same time as The Wall, actually. They did this over at Village Recorders and the Producers Workshop. So it was kind of at the same time as um, The Wall was kind of being prepped. Uh, this is notable for having uh, Robert Wyatt on vocals. Uh, he was in a band called The Soft Machine, which actually backed up Sid Barrett on some old uh, rec solo recordings of his from like 68, 69, which is kind of interesting. It's all from the Cambridge sort of scene, so everything kind of has its ties. Nice printed uh, inner sleeve here. We have various pictures of Nick in the studio, which is quite cool. Lyrics and such. As for the vinyl... They replicated the um, the old school Harvest label, which is nice. Pressed over at Optimal on nice heavyweight 180 gram vinyl and mastered by uh, Miles Shoal uh, using the Abbey Road half speed uh, master process. So I'm sure these are going to be absolutely wonderful sounding pressings. And the next one up is a collaboration album called Profiles. This was done with a uh, individual by the name of Rick Fenn, who was in 10CC. And um, the notable track on this album is Lie for a Lie, which has uh, David Gilmour on vocals. So it's kind of Floyd-esque, I guess you could say, since it has Mason and Gilmour. And on the um, inner sleeve of this one, each member has their own side dedicated to the inner sleeve. So you have Nick on this one, and then you have Rick Fenn on this one here. And then for this record, we have the black and silver uh, Harvest label, which looks absolutely stunning. I like how they replicated the Harvest labels here, because if you can recall, during the uh, Pink Floyd uh, vinyl reissue campaign, um, any albums that were done on Harvest just had a newly designed Pink Floyd Records label. I'm not quite sure what that was all for. Could be down to rights or whatever, but it's nice that they went as far as to replicate them here. And next we have another Rick Fenn collaboration. This is called White of the Eye, and this is actually a uh, film soundtrack. Print an inner sleeve here. This time around it's actually die cut. As you can see, the center label is there. And then on this side uh, here we have the song titles on the label. And then we have the eye on this one. So yeah, like I said, in terms of all of the uh, Pink Floyd uh, solo uh, careers, uh, Nick's uh, stuff, as well as even Richard Wright's stuff, is stuff I have not gotten to yet. And um, 
I feel like I would really appreciate Richard Wright's uh, solo stuff, uh, considering how his influence is so integral to the Floyd sound, but um, I think listening to Nick's stuff will actually uh, prove to be quite interesting, and I'm extremely excited to dig my way through his uh, solo works, Nick Mason's Unattended Luggage. Okay, so here is a new release, actually, which came out today on Friday the 15th. And uh, this is one that I've been anticipating for quite some time. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've listened to this album, and I think hearing it in this format will perhaps freshen my ears a little bit. Uh, this is David Bowie's Space Oddity. This is the new 2019 50th anniversary mix edition, which was done by Tony Visconti. And um, honestly, this is a fantastic record and great early album for Bowie. Um, it's very much in the folky sort of 12-string guitar kind of sound that he was doing early on in like the late 60s. Uh, but there are some killer tracks on this album. You get Signet Committee, which is this great nine-minute epic. Um, Unwashed and So Much Slightly Days is a fun one. Uh, Wild-Eyed Boy from Free Clouds, a beautiful track. And of course, the title track, Space Oddity, of course. Uh, if you do not know that song now, where have you been? Now, this is not just any ordinary remix of the album. Um, they decided to include a song which was originally intended for the album, but due to the constraints of vinyl back in the day, it had to be taken out. And that song is called Conversation Piece, uh, which ended up becoming the B-side of the Prettiest Star single uh, the following year in 1970, which featured um, Mark Bolin on guitar from T-Rex. Uh, so they put it back in place of where it would have been on the original album. So it's sandwiched between Wild-Eyed Boy from Free Cloud and God Knows I'm Good. Now, this vinyl package is very well designed. It comes in a nice sort of die-cut slipcase here. And then on the front uh, part, we have Bowie on the front. And then we have the illustration which appears on the back of the original. And then we kind of have like an up-to-date uh, rendering of the gatefold sleeve, which has all of the lyrics and credits which is quite nice. And this is another one of those marketable Bowie vinyl releases that they've been doing for several years. Um, they started doing this ever since they reissued the two changes Bowie uh, compilations where they would press it up on like mystery colored vinyl. For changes one Bowie, you either got black or clear vinyl. And for changes two Bowie, you either got blue or black. And for this, they decided to make it even more rabid for the collectors of variants and such. So there's a numbered limited series and then there's just the standard black run. So copies 1 to 1969 were pressed on silver vinyl. Then copies 1970 to 2019 were pressed on gold vinyl. And I think that's going to be the most collectible expensive variant. And then everything after that is just standard black. And then, upon opening my copy, I ended up getting just the plain basic black, which is fine because, I mean, granted, it would have been great to have a collectible pressing of it, but I'm all about the remix and how it sounds. So there's a nice little uh, up-to-date rendering of the old-school Philips label, which was the label that this album was uh, made available on back in the day. And if you see the, um, the little silver block here, uh, that's where they would put the number for which copy you got and which color it would be on. But nice pressing overall. This was pressed over an Optimal, mastered by Ray Staff, who has been doing all of the Bowie vinyl releases lately. So I'm sure this is going to sound absolutely wonderful, and I'm excited to see what Tony Visconti does. Now, uh, this remix is also available uh, separately on CD, and it's also a part of the conversation piece box set which brings together all of the demos which appear on all these assorted seven inch box sets that we've gotten this year including some uh unreleased bits that were not made on vinyl before so um so they decided to make a cd release for all that stuff which i think was wise because there's people out there that don't buy vinyl that want those demos um i was gonna pre-order the box set but um 
the Pink Floyd Later Year set is my only big investment for the holiday season. I can't go too overboard, but hopefully for Christmas, maybe. We'll see. But I am very excited to dig into this remix. David Bowie, Space Oddity, the 50th Anniversary Remix. All right, so here is an album by a band that I actually don't have any records of. So this is actually a first for me. And um, I'm actually shocked that I didn't dig into this album uh, sooner than I did now. And I, I was just listening to some of the tracks that appear on this record, and it just prompted me to purchase the album and see what else entails with this artist's catalog. Um, they're a great rock band uh, that has immense amounts of talent, great musicianship, and a great live show. And they've been going at it for about 20 plus years, somewhere around there. Um, it is... Black Holes and Revelations by Muse. Muse is a um, British rock band. Uh, they're notable for having that early hit, Plug Me Baby. Um, and then they have this album here, which I think is one of the most notable ones because it features the monumental Knights of Sidonia, which was on Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. And right off the bat, when I was playing through that game, that was one of my all-time favorite songs to play on the game and also just a brilliant song to begin with. And then uh, on the Twilight movie soundtrack during the baseball scene, there's Supermassive Black Hole, which is just a great sludgy sounding rock tune. And then there's the song Assassin, uh, which is on Guitar Hero World Tour. So it's really thanks to Guitar Hero that um, I became aware of these guys. Um, right off the bat, you have a Storm Thorgerson Floyd-esque cover which is quite cool. Storm actually uh, took the photo uh, for this cover. Here's the back. And then we have a nice uh, insert, which has the band members here. And then we have lyrics on this side. And we have nice custom labels on black vinyl, which is quite cool. So I'm hoping that I'll enjoy, I'm sure I will, um, I'll enjoy the other cuts on here, aside from the three that I mentioned, which all appear on this album. And uh, maybe it'll prompt me to purchase more albums of theirs. We shall see in the future. Can't wait to dig into it. Muse, Black Holes, and Revelations. Okay, so here is a rather cool box set that I ordered from a uh, eBay seller that had it for a much lower price than the initial value that this was being sold at at the time when it first came out. Um, it's not necessarily complete by any means, and I'll explain kind of why, but I think for what it features, which is the main draw of the set, it does resemble excellent value. I paid about $45 for this, and uh, this is a really neat package that I'm really excited to just dig into, and that is this box set here. So this is called Live at the Gold Dollar. Now this was part of Third Man Records Vault subscription service. Uh, this is package number 27 as far as I know. So this comes from early 2016. And uh, basically this collects uh, three concerts from three different bands, all of which were recorded at the legendary Gold Dollar uh, venue in Detroit, which um, unfortunately burned down quite recently. And uh, we have performances from Jack White and the Bricks, Two Star Tabernacle, and The Go. And I mainly picked this up um, mainly because I had just gotten the uh, The Go uh, vault package, which you may have seen already in this haul. And I, um, I really enjoyed that record, and I wanted to dig deeper into their stuff and see what else is out there. And since I saw they were featured here, along with Jack White and the Bricks, which was like a solo offshoot project that was going on at the same time as he was doing the White Stripes... Uh, and also, he was involved with Two Star Tabernacle, so I figured this would be a cool addition to have. Now, this does not include the 7-inch adapter and the Dead Weather Let Me Through single, which is fine considering I already have a Third Man adapter and I have the Let Me Through single as part of my Dodge and Burn uh, Dead Weather 7-inch box set. So, we'll start off first with... Jack White and the Bricks. And um, what's really cool about the set list is that it is essentially a White Stripes set list, but done as Jack White himself and some of his friends. So, like right off the bat, Brendan Benson's on this. He is, of course, in the Rack and Tours. And then there's also uh, Ben Blackwell on the drums, who is, uh, he runs Third Man with, uh, with Jack. And we get things on here like Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground, The Same Boy You've Always Known, You've Got Her in Your Pocket. So it's a lot of early airings of some of those early um, White Stripes classics. 
And uh, this was recorded back in, does it say? It doesn't say what year. I'm going to suspect 98, 99 or something around there. Uh, and what's really cool for, for each of the shows is that they each come with little bits of ephemera. So we have like a concert flyer on this side and we have the set list here. And is it actually, as you can see, it's from 1999, September 16th, 1999. And all of the records, I'm not going to pull all them out, so I'll just show the first one. They're all pressed on very nice translucent gold vinyl with a nice custom third man vault label there, which is quite nice. Nice and heavy weight. Good, good stuff. So that is for um, Jack White and the Bricks. And next is Two Star Tabernacle. And as you can see, there's Jack right there. Uh, so this band included members that would be part of the bands uh, Blanche and um, Detroit Cobras. And what's interesting about this is that we actually have some early, early airings of some White Stripes classics on here, like Hotel Yorba, uh, Now Mary, and Who's to Say, which I believe was a B-side. Uh, the bit of memorabilia that you have here is um, another gig flyer. And then the set list on this side. And then we have the go right here. And also I should say the box itself and the sleeves come in these very nice soft touch kind of sleeves. They feel really nice and the gold kind of looks metallic. Even though it's not really metallic, it just has a nice sort of gloss uh, finish to it. Here's the back and we basically have... I'll, I'll, and most of the songs that appear on the record so it's a great live rendition of the album not in its entirety by any means and then here we have a um, looks like a contract letter on this side here and then on the flip side we have lyrics to one of the songs which is uh, Long is the Tongue which I don't think that was on the record I don't think I'll have to double check but that's a really cool addition to have here and then, last but not least, we have a little fold-out poster of the gold dollar. Very nice, thick uh, cardstock on that poster. It's very, very nice. So, so this is really cool. Um, just a great box set of Jack White-related live recordings. And also, I feel that this uh, perhaps will have me dig a bit deeper into his endeavors. Because... Um, this was all going on at the same time as he was doing the White Stripes and such. So with all the main focus going on to the White Stripes in this period, I think this will shine a light on some of his other endeavors quite nicely. And also, it'll be cool to hear the, um, the Two Star Tabernacle uh, stuff, which I'm not quite familiar with. So absolutely amazing value. Good, good stuff. Live at the Gold Dollar, Third Man Vault, number 27. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of records that I have acquired within the month of November in this year, 2019. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the records spinning.